In this example, um, we find the probability of an event occurring by counting. So what we do is we start off with the experiment where a pair of six-sided die is rolled. A list the sample space of all possible outcomes and uh, what we'll find is that this is sort of a tedious task so we have the first die and then the second die So here we have the first die, maybe they're different colors, so maybe that's the red one is one, two, three, four, five, six, and then the second one, maybe it's blue, is one, two, three, four, five, six, and then we make a pair, one, one. So that would mean that the first one rolled is one, the second one rolls one. Or you could have the first one, the second two, one, three, one, four, one, five, one, six, Okay, so what's one five? First is one, second is five, two one, etc. So it's it's a lot, and um, it's a really it's a classic problem, but it is a little bit of trouble filling this out. But um, you know, there's a lot of games where you use dice, and you want to find the chance of something happening. So there's different games you can play in Las Vegas that have to do with rolling dice and you can bet on the outcome. So if you're betting on the outcome, you might want to know the probability that you'll win or lose. This one's a mistake. That should be four or five. All right, so let's have to do problem B, which is um, to find, find the probability that the sum of the die rolled is seven. So, let A be the event that the sum of the die rolled is 4. I think I said sum before. Let's, this one's 4. All right, so first of all, um, let's list out A. So A is going to consist of those events, when you roll a die and you get four, so one and three, two and two, three and one, those will all give us four. So what I mean is that, you know, I roll a die, in this case I got a three and a five, I add those up and I get eight. So we're looking at, say, uh, roll one and roll three, that's going to give us four. That's one way we can get four. I'll write that down. One, three. And then we could also have two, two, and three, one. So I started off with the least number you can roll on the first die, which is one, and then I moved that. I went one, two, and three, and I found the other number that makes a sum of four. So the probability of A is equal to 
the number of elements in A divided by the number of elements in the sample space. So how many of things are there in A? There's three. And they're all equally likely to happen. It's sort of better maybe to look up here. One, two, three. So there's three, thing, three ways you can roll a four as a sum. But look, there's a total of six times six possible outcomes. That makes 36. That reduces to 1 12th. Let B be the event that the sum of the dice rolled is 7. This is supposed to be dice up there. So first of all, we'll, we'll list out A. And then we'll find the probability We'll list out B and find the probability of B. So B is going to equal, all right, I'm going to start off with, with 1 as the first roll. 1 plus 6 makes 7. Then it's 2. 2 plus 5 makes 7. 3 plus 4 makes 7. 4 plus 3 makes 7. 5 plus 2, 6, 1. So then the probability of B is equal to the number of elements in B divided by the number of elements in S. So let's go ahead and color in our picture above here. So uh, I have 1, 6, 2, 5, 3, 4, 4, 3, 5, 2, 6, 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 of those are colored in. Sorry, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 are colored in. And how many in total are there things that can happen? There's 36. And that makes 1, 6. So when you roll 7, uh, that's your sum, there's, there's 6 ways that could happen. So you get a chances of 6 out of 36, you roll 7. While for rolling a 4, a sum of 4, there's only three ways that could happen, so you get three out of 36. So you're more likely, twice as likely, to roll a seven as a sum than four as a sum.